Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we will do the usual, we'll go over our portfolio update for the month of February and I will also share a couple of trades that I have done recently and we'll walk through those trades. One in particular is going to be Intel, the other one is going to be Bank of America. Now if you end up enjoying the video and you would like to see more of these kind of videos, make sure you leave a like and without further ado, let's dive in. All right, starting off, let's look at our performance for the month of February. We underperformed as opposed to S&P 500. S&P went down 2.61%, whereas we went down 3.57%. Now, overall, there are three major stocks that are performing very well and holding our portfolio versus some of these other growth stocks that were very high during the 2020, 2021. They are currently underperforming and some are even down 50, 60%. Tesla is a big winner in our portfolio. It is up 73% from the time we bought. Excel which is an energy sector ETF is up 20.58%. We have Wale, which is again a very strong player because we bought Wale a long time ago at the $12, $13 mark. It is up a good 18%. So we have about $80 or so as a profit. And then we have our big performer with AMD at 9%. Now, most recently, because the chip semiconductor industry really took off, we got back into the green with AMD. What I'm basically looking for a pullback so that I can add more to the AMD. I'm waiting on Tesla as well to pull back a little bit more because when we bought Tesla, we got an average price of $105. So we almost purchased Tesla at near lows. Now, when it comes to losers, one of the stocks that is a big loser for us is Velodyne Lider, which merged with Ouster. So it is down 82% from its all time high, but it only comprises of 0.3% of the portfolio overall. Not a big impact on the portfolio. Next up is Polestar and it is down 64% from the time that we bought. Our average price was $11. Currently, the stock is trading around $4. I am considering to look into adding more of Polestar considering that the company is still performing pretty well. So I will be doing another update on Polestar in the coming days or so. The next big one is Robinhood, which is down 57% from its all time high. Uh, it is about 3.68% of our portfolio. Similar levels is SoFi because I think the whole fintech growth companies are hit. It is also down 57%. It is about 3.98% of our portfolio. Chargepoint, 56% down forms about 3.5% of our portfolio. By the time this is all at the time of the recording. So when I'll post the screenshot in the video, the numbers might be a little different. Pinterest is down 49% and it is about 7% of our portfolio. I'm not going to be adding any more Pinterest to the portfolio as of right now. Ford, which is a dividend paying company is uh, down almost 19, 20%, which is about 6.89% of the portfolio. And just like posts are, I am inclined to add more of Ford into the portfolio in the coming days or so. PayPal holding is also down 18% is also 6.35% of the portfolio. The biggest loser that I would really say is the XLF ETF, which is down 12.92% and it's almost 12% of our portfolio. But this is our overall performance. Right now we have about $440 cash. We'll be adding another $200 for the month of March. Our total balance for cash will be about $640. So there you go. That was an update on the portfolio. I have launched a newsletter that you might find it very helpful and it's a free of cost to you. So all you have to do is put your email. I'll put the link in the description. If you want to learn more about trading and how we set up our trades for the upcoming week, I host a Twitter space call every Sunday along with my friend Trader Nate and Sean Clark. And you might find those very helpful in your trading strategies. The links will be in the description so definitely check them out. All right, let's get into our first trade of the week, which is Intel. Now I have written a whole article on Intel where I explain my trade and you can definitely check that out. The link will be in the description for this particular article, but you can always sign for the newsletter. So on 227, we opened a cash secured put for that week, which was expiration of 32. Our strike price was 2450 and we received a premium of 28 cents per share. Total comes out to be $28. So that particular week, the stock price on the chart over here, as you can see, kept going up and it ended the week around the 2653 mark and the contract expired worthless. Coming back here, then on 36, because the stock had already run up to $26, we could not open a contract at 2450 because for the premium was very low. So we decided to open a contract at $26. So initially when we opened the contract, we received about 30 cents or $30. 
Now, as the week progressed, we had this big downturn in the stock price of Intel, and that was due to the semiconductor industry having some bad press. And then the stock actually ended up coming all the way to 2552, which made my contract in the money. And due to that, the extrinsic value dropped drastically and it got crushed. So what we did was I saw an opportunity and we rolled that contract out for 17 expiration. To roll the contract, what we ended up doing was we had to close this leg of the contract. So we gave up $49. Remember, we had $30 before we sold it for $49 and our, from our pocket, we had to pay $19. Then we opened a second contract in the rolling at the second leg. The expiration was $317. And for that contract, we opened at the same strike price and we got $70 as a premium. And that you can read it in the newsletter. That's where we have captured that information. Now, as the week progressed, we saw this big spike in Intel stock price and the stock ran all the way up to $28 on 314. So on Twitter, I posted this March 14th update that our cash secured put was up 90% at that point in time. I decided to close this contract just because since there were still a couple days left for the expiration and there was no point in continuing to hold that because if the stock price went down, I would lose this gain. And 90% is a good gain on a trade for every single week if when you are making it. So that's why I decided to close this contract. And due to that, I had to give up. The contract cost was around six cents at that point of time. Remember, we got 70 cents. The contract was six cents. So our net gain was 64 dollars at this point of time in the three contracts that i have opened i have earned 73 dollars in intel and in three weeks and our roi on this one is 2.87 now if you follow intel and you want to invest in intel and you want to see how this strategy pans out definitely subscribe to the channel follow me on twitter because i post regular updates and subscribe to the newsletter because i will be posting a bi-weekly update on this intel wheel strategy along with a couple other stocks the second trade that i did this week was bank of of America. Now, why Bank of America? You most recently heard about the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank over the weekend. In fact, the last week and over the weekend, the whole fiasco, how the bank was failing and how the Fed had to intervene to save the bank. You probably saw a lot of YouTube videos made by other people. But again, these are the opportunities that present itself to you. Now, due to Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, Bank of America stocks along with other banking stocks took a major hit. Now, as the market opened on Monday, 3.30, there was a lot of negative sentiment in the market and the stock open dropped all the way from the $30, $29 to $27.91. At that point of time, all the cash secured put premiums for the week started going up dramatically and we took an advantage by opening a cash secured put for expiration of $3.17 and we got $34.31. Then what happened that due to the overreaction as the market settled in, the stock, the next day when the market opened, the stock ran all the way to $30.58. And at that point of time, because within a span of a day, we made 50% on a trade, I decided to close it out. So I had to give up $16.03 and our net profit was $18.28 within a single day of trade. Now, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure you hit the like, click on subscribe and ring the bell notification. I will see you next time, Investor Family, but don't forget to invest for tomorrow.